It's Tuesday Wrestling, and you all know what that means. Once again, we get to review NWA Power, AEW Dark, and NXT. But first things first, we're going to be reviewing the latest stardom event. They went to Koryama for the second day of the Goddess of Stardom Tag League. As you know, they were some several changes that were made because three of their Roster members headed to New York. We all know who they were. I don't need to remind everybody. But also, we had some special matches that I feel it's going to be very interesting to enjoy. But also, we got some news updates. Um, one of them, as you know, there's been involving with WWE with five, with five NXT releases and other things. So we'll be talking about that as well. So let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted WrestleZone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J-Rod here. So, let's begin with Stardom for Day 2 of Goddess of Stardom Tag League. This is Day 2. This took place recently on the 30th of October. And this was in Koryama in Fukushima region, where in fact is the home of Amisuri, which she'll be in the main event later on. However, there were some changes in this match where certain wrestlers were not there, but I'll get to those in little by little. Now, our first match is singles action. We have Mai Sukurai taking on Momokogo. Now, I cannot recall how many times they faced. I know they did have a five-star Grand Prix match where Mai Sukurai won. And apparently, this was also a the same kind of result as last time, but the only difference this time, uh, my Sakurai finished off Momo Kogo with a diving elbow drop, and that gives her a victory right there. Now, the second uh, match is part of the Blue Star block. We have, of course, um, Wingori of Stars, consistent of Hana, Hanan, and Saya Kamitani, no, Saya Ida, my bad. Taking on BMI 200,000 of Oda Tai, consistent of Ruka and Natsuko Tora. Now, you probably know last time these um, BMI 2000 had a really bad match where they decided to disqualify themselves, but this time they decided not to do that. They decided to try to beat them as much as possible, but it was the Swanton Bomb by Natsuko Tora that landed on Hanan that gave them the first two points. So, right now, at this point, um, BMI 2000 has only two points with one win and one loss. Now, our next match. This one is a very delicate one. It's a three-way tag match, but on a technicality, it's a four-on-two. It's okay. Once again, we have Himai, known as Himika and Micah of DDM, versus Mafia Bella, Julian Tekla, also from DDM, taking on Cosmic Angels, Tam Nakano, and... Natsupoi. Now, however, Natsu, uh, not, not, uh, Tam actually felt that this is biased, that you're putting them in the ring against four members of DDM in the same. Now, however, Natsupoi knew that sooner or later she has to confront them. Keep in mind, DDM has no love loss against Natsupoi for what she did back in July when she turned on them. So Natsupoi is willing to, how we say, face the music she knows she has to confront them so she there's no backing down now this match exactly ended up how you would have wanted but the only thing i did like is how even though people question is they don't have their seconds with them i mean we know where mina and waka were they were on the other side of the pacific in new york city you know i mean that's how it was but that's how it ended but 
There's nothing they can do about that. And of course, it ended with a five minute uh, with a time limit draw with passing 15. However, once it was over, everybody started to attacking Natsupo. They even tried to separate Tam from her. Then, but I have to say, Tam did an excellent job. Tried to protect her from DDM. Now, as I said before, there is no love loss with DDM against Natsupoi. Natsupoi made her choice. And, of course, I know it makes them sick to their stomach knowing that she's succeeding where she's at right now. But sooner or later, they might have to deal with her again down the line. Now, our next match is again with the Blue Goddess block. We got, of course, last year's winner and the champions, FWC, um, Koguma and Azuki taking on... Queen's Quest O2 line consistent of Miyu Amasaki and Azumi. I thought this match was pretty decent, despite the fact you have Azumi, who is a, a high speedster, almost also the same thing with Azuki and uh, Koguma. But however, it was Koguma who finished off this match with a um, diving body splash onto um, uh, Masaki, giving them the win. So I believe right now they have. Two points with two with one win and one loss. So that's a pretty good one. Now our next match is part of the Red Goddess block. We have We Love Tokyo Sports, consistent of Fukigen Death, and um, Saki Kashima taking on Aphrodite, consistent of Queen's Quest, um, Utami Ishida, and Sayakami Tani. Now this was a very interesting matchup, as you know. Uh, but however, it was Sayakami Tani with the Star Crusher onto uh, Saki Kashima that allowed her to have the two victories, but I think right now they are current. Right now, this is the first match that they have. Uh, for um, for this, as you know, when the Goddess Tag League started, Utami was involved in that IWGP Women's Championship tournament. Um, uh, this is the first match that uh, Aphrodite gets involved. So, um, no problem there. So right now, I believe Aphrodite has two points with one win so far. And as for Tokyo, uh, we love Tokyo sports. One win and one loss. So they're tied at the moment. And as I said, this is too early to tell what's going to happen. But right after this match, Natsuko Tora confronts Utami Shi. As you know, they will be facing each other on November 3rd. This is a revenge match for what happened last year when Utami was, in fact, the Red Belt champion. So we'll see what takes place then. Now, our main event, as I mentioned, they're in, um, in Fuku, um, uh, Fukushima. Uh, uh, Koryama, somewhere around there in Japan, which is the hometown of Amisuri. Amisuri promised to her fe her hometown that she would be coming back with a championship. And as you know, she won the Future of Stardom Championship on New Blood 5, and everybody's happy. So it's, of course, God's Eye, consistent of Mirai, Amisuri, and Suri taking on Oda Tide, Rina, Starlight Kid, and Momo Wananabe. But the entire time of this match, Odetai targeted Ami, so they tried to embarrass her. But the one who wants to beat the crap out of her is Rina. Now, Rina, as you know, she feels that that title is consistently made for her because she's a lot more younger than Ami Suri. Now, I'm not sure how old is she. Hold on. I know Rina is, like, currently... um, Like, in her teens right now. Late teens. I think Ami Tori should be... Ooh, 25. So basically, she feels that people like Amisuri are have no right being wearing that title. But the only reason Amisuri want, uh, is the champion and qualified the challenge was because she only has three years of experience. The only way to qualify for a match like that is either you have a one, the three year uh, experience. And that kind of sits in. But Rena felt that should have been her. But she ended up on the wrong side of a spinning. A uh, brain buster by Amisuri picking up the win. And of course, when they closed on the show, Amisuri did that for everybody. Promise, gave her the promise what she said. And she can't wait to see them back again when the next time they arrive back into this region. So I thought it was pretty good. Uh, hopefully the next uh, continuation of Goddess Tag League uh, will be fu fun. So right now, let's move on to our next review. And that would be Prestige Wrestling Roseland 4, Wake the Dead. Okay, Prestige Wrestling. 
uh, Roseland 4, Wake the Dead, this took place on the 30th of October, opened up with a tag team action. We have Violence is Forever, Kevin Koo and Dominic Greeny taking on the American Wolves, Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards. Now, this match, I have to say, what an opener. I knew this match was going to be a total banger because these two teams are amazing how they are. But you can tell by the toughness and all this other stuff. But it was Davey Richards with the ankle lock onto Kevin Koo that sealed the deal for him to force Kevin Koo to tap out, of course. And it's a, a kind of no shame in losing, but Kevin Koo had no other choice. So American Wolves picked up the victory, and that's pretty much it what took place in this match. Next match, we have Alan Angels, formerly known as Five, taking on the prodigy Nick Wayne. I thought this match was pretty good. I enjoyed all of it, a lot of hot spots, moments, and all that. You probably say that Nick Wayne had this one in the bag, but however, since Alan Angels became went on his own doing his own thing he went to the dark side and he also been doing some nasty things so he low blowed nick wayne and then he applied that little neck breaker that he does to win the match and i'm sure every fan are not liking this how it goes so yeah now our next match we have amari taking on sumi sakai uh i don't know what to call this match but it seems like there was a moment where we thought, okay, Sumi Sakai kicked out of during a pinfall, but the ref said that it was a three count. I was totally confused. I think many fans were confused as well. So I don't know what to call it, but Ami, Am, Amari, Ak, Amira actually picked up the win. I just let's just leave it at that, you know, because I got confused on that. Next up, we got Kevin Blackwood taking on Dragon Gates as B Kento. What a match! You probably thought in your in your minds that this would end up in submission. Now, everybody thought that uh, SB Kento was going to do the shooter on him, you know, the, the sharpshooter. And, of course, we saw Blackwood did the Texas Cloverleaf. But it did not do any anybody favor. So, Kevin Blackwood ended it with a double stomp to the chest onto SB Kento. Give him the victory. One, two, three. And it was over. But in the end... SB Kento gained respect to Kevin Blackwood. I think he enjoyed that match a lot. I don't know exactly if he was looking for a good match, but we do know Kevin Blackwood needed to make up for two recent losses in, prestigious, in prestige. Next up, we got La Estrella taking on Commander. Now, you guys know Commander has been tearing it up since he came into the States. I thought it was another good match. I mean, Lucha Libre style. Who doesn't love Lucha Libre? I grew up on that shit as a kid, you know? I always have. I used to go on TV, turn on every Sunday to watch Lucha Libre. I just love it. But I knew this match was going to be a lot of spot, hot spots in every moment. But the best moment I like is how Commander ended it. He did, uh, if you guys seen Commander, he runs through on the ropes, but... He jump, gets to the end and jumps over the other side. But in this case, he went halfway to pull off, oh my god, a shooting star press. That was impressive. So he picked up a win with that, and I'm like, wow, amazing. Next up, this was supposed to be a uh, Roseland death match between Drelks and Danger uh, Hurin. This match was not going so well for Danger. He was getting his ass whipped by Drelks. But out of nowhere, it became a handicap match for Drelks when he has to face someone he has challenged. And we're talking about the Deaf Samurai Akira. No one expected Akira to show up, but he did. He showed up, he kicked his ass, and it took a bunch of tu light tubes to take down Drelks. I mean, Drelks refuses to stay down, but it took a lot of those light tubes to finish him off once and for all. One, two, three, it was over. Now, next match. This is a tournament for the IWTV Territory uh, Tag Team Match. Now, this is from that uh, network, IWTV, and they already picked some wrestlers that are going to be involved. First team right now, we have the West Coast Wrecking Crew, Royce Isis and Jarrell Nelson, taking on C4, Cody Chun, and Guillermo Rosas. I have to say, what a match. 
Now, these were two teams. You probably could guess right away that they're hungry. They want to go to, I forgot where they were going to go, to become the first ever inaugural IWTV Tag Team Champions. You know how that's going to be. It was great. We know how good these teams were, but it was the teamwork by C4 that made a difference. Cody Chun took out uh, Roy's Isaacs out while, uh, of course, Guillermo Rosas made the pinfall onto uh, Jarrell Nelson. One, two, three, it's over. And they can't wait to go straight to the next round in order to proceed more to make it all the way to win the IWTV Tag Team uh, Territory Tag Team Champions. So, yeah. Next match, we have Sonico taking on Black Turus. What a match as well. Now, Sonico has been declared by many the ace of, of prestige, but he took that as a compliment, even though it was never like his intention. I have to say it was a good match because Sonico is a bit more smaller than uh, Black Turus, but don't let the sides for you. But it was Sonico with the AMF that sealed the deal with him to take down Black Turus once and for all. Uno, dos, tres, se acabó. It's over right there. So impressive match. Now, this is one match I was waiting for, and I was looking forward to it. We have the Vrucheros Diana Prazo taking on the Jungle Princess, Jungle Kiona, man. I love Jungle Kiona. I have to say, I'm getting to enjoy her now since she went freelancing. I love it. But you probably know this. They These two ladies know each other too well. Diana Prazo had made excursions to Japan in the past with stardom, but this is more like reacquaintance with themselves. But you probably would have assumed that Diana Prazo, with her experience as a technical wrestler, would have sealed the deal. But it was John Kiona with the Jungle Buster that sealed the deal for her to win this match over Diana Prazo. And I thought it was a great match. Now, our next match is for the Prestige Championship between challenger Dragon Gate's very own Yamato taking on Alex Shelley. What a match, too. I thought it was good as well, but it was Alex Shelley with a crossface that finished the deal for him to make Yamato tap out, and it was over right from there, and Alex Shelley retained the title. So, what a great moment. I loved it. I enjoyed it. So, I think that's pretty much it with this. I'm going to try to change it up a bit right now, so we're, let's move on with news updates, and I will continue more with uh, Tuesday Wrestling with NWA, um, AW Dark, and of course... NXC. So let's go with news updates right now. Okay. Welcome to news updates for everyone. So don't be surprised if that I put this up right now. I, it's not the first time I've done it, but uh, let's get started right now with it. So, uh, we got some updates coming from WWE, as you guys may have heard recently. NXT has released five wrestlers so far. We have Rufang, Fang, Domris Griffin, Erica Yan, Sloan Jacobs, and of course, this one was a bit of a shocker to me, Bodie Haywood. Now, let's, now you probably ask yourselves why. Apparently they did not try did not improve as much as they were supposed to. They this was a new rule to put these guys under pressure to build up their character right now, try to improve more and more. And it turned this was under the new rule of the new regime, and that kind of sets it in. So that's why they're released. But I think many fans were completely shocked with Bodie Haywood, who now goes back to Brady Brooks. Uh if you guys recall last week on Tuesday. On NXT, we did not see Bodie Haywood. He was nowhere to be found. Uh, if now we make sense that he was released. I, I think him, I don't know if they released him last week, but he did post it a video on his Twitter page. I can tell he wanted to cry. You know, I'm not gonna criticize him on that, but I can sense he's hurt. He can't believe that this happened. That this that his dream has fallen apart. I know many of you probably would say right now. It's a little bullshit for WWE, but keep in mind, guys, many wrestlers in NXT have stayed there for years until without any improvements. So I think that we're putting more pressure on them, and I get it. But hopefully, 
with Bodie Haywood. He was the one guy I did not anticipate that he would be released. But hopefully we'll see him somewhere down the line. And if WWE makes a decision to take him back, then we'll be happy for him that too. So let's just leave it as that and just continue to support Bodie Haywood, or now goes by Brady Brooks. Now, in relations to more on WWE, as you guys may have heard, we'll be having Crown Jewel coming up real soon. However, once again, there's been concerns with Saudi Arabia. Now, remember, last time there was this thing with with the Crown Jewel about uh, a situation where Saudi Arabia might have been responsible for the death of a, a Saudi citizen. This time, the circumstances have changed. Apparently, uh, the U.S. and Saudi Arabia are fearing of an imminent attack coming from Iran to Saudi Arabia around the time that WWE will be in Saudi Arabia for Crown Jewel. Uh, they're been saying, are they going to postpone it? Apparently, they're not. They're going to keep moving forward with this. Now, I don't know if this is a wise decision due to the situation going on in the Middle East. So, we'll just see what happens then. Now, I did mention this before recently, that Dominic Dijakovic uh, is be returning to NXT. It's now been revealed by um, PW Insider, that uh, or PW Torch, I don't remember, remember which one, that, NX, that Dijakovic is now back on the NXT internal roster. So we don't know when he'll be making his re-debut or return to NXT. I'm sure many fans are looking forward to it. Now, I did mention on a news update alert yesterday on the uh, 29th, to, on the 30th, if you guys remember, GCW announced for uh, the future of GC of their of their company uh, about broadcasting and streaming. It was now announced that they will be now joining Fight TV. Uh, you guys can subscribe with them for 4.99, almost five bucks. Uh, you guys get to watch old uh, shows from them, like. There are archive footage and, of course, new events. This is the same thing I do with NWA. You know, they pay four ninety nine a month, and I have no problem with it. But it's kind of good that they're doing that now, and I think we're very happy for that. Uh, also, relating to uh, the Fight TV thing, uh, Wrestling Revolver even announced the same thing, too. Now they're joining Fight TV with the same price. Now... Uh, hopefully we have the same kind of thing where we'll see old footage. So it's great that GCW and Wrestling Revolver are now getting into the same bandwagon as Fight TV. I know some of you were speculating another thing, but that's how it is. Now, in relations to GCW, we have two things coming up. Uh, first of all, we have the Aurora event taking place on the 20th. It was announced that there was going to be a rematch. Between two former rest, two wrestlers that have faced off each other, Speedball Mike Bailey versus the Foundation Jen Jonathan Gresham. Now, for one of their upcoming events taking place uh, later on in December fourth or third, the Rejects, consistent of M John Wayne Murdoch and his taxi partner, forgot who he was, Brent something, uh, will be re making their return to that, and that's pretty much what I've been hearing. Now, for our next update, um, ICW No Holds Barred has announced that for their upcoming event, uh, Pit Fighter of uh, 14th, there's going to be a title match between for the ICW American Deathmatch title with Casey Kirk taking on Hoodfoot. This is going to be a bloody type match. I can't wait to see it. Now, finally, uh, Pro Wrestling Eve has announced for their upcoming event for next month on the 13th of November. For Wrestle Queendom 5. Now, I didn't mention certain events. We're going to have two members from Marvelous face off each other. Uh, we have Rin Kadokura, who will be making her debut in Pro Wrestling Eve, taking on also someone from Marvelous. You guys know her, Maria. So, this is these are two of uh, Shiguza Nagayo's uh, uh, students from Marvelous. So, I'm kind of curious how this is going to go. Hopefully, I get a chance to see it. But it would be interesting to go on on that. So I'm kind of curious. I really love it. I know there's going to be some matches taking place on that day. But uh, can't wait for uh, Wrestle Queensdom. So we'll see. So I think that's pretty much it. So I think it's time to move on with NWA Power. Okay. NWA 
Power. As you know, we're continuing on more with Tuesday Wrestling. It opened up with Flip Gordon taking on Kobe Carino. Uh, of course, uh, Kobe Carino's manager slash friend or whatever he is. Jamie Sunny was right there. Now, this match could have gone in Flip Gordon's way. But if it wasn't for a bit of distraction by Jamie Stanley to allow Kobe Carino to win, that was probably the X factor. But it was the Avalanche Kobe Clutch, Kobe Clutch that sealed the deal for him to win the match. However, he has to be more prepared now that he's facing a much dangerous competitor at hard times. And that would be, of course, Davey Richards. Now, we do get a little interview with Chris Silvio and Jack Stane. As you know... Jack Sane has been having uh, issues towards Matt, uh, Anthony Mayweather. Now, Mayweather does not want to fight Jack Sane anymore. And now, Silvio is claiming that there's been a fa an affair between both Mayweather's wife and Jack Stane. So, basically, this is kind of disgusting. But if I was Silvio, I'd be watching my back before he kicks you in the ass. Now, our next Interview is coming from uh, May uh, Valentine. She talks to Tyrus now. Tyrus is still doing that same old routine where he is walking in into a very much interesting match. He's going to be facing not only uh, Trevor Murdoch but Matt Cardona. But however, he will be teaming with uh, on power next week with Trevor Murdoch. However, he doesn't trust him, but he knows that they, they need each other to win the match. He knows he cannot even trust the Pope or Matt Cardona. So he knows what's at stake. So he is now focusing more than ever the ever has ever been to, ch to chase for the NWA World Heavyweight title. Now our next match is a number one contendership for the NWA World Tag Team titles. We have Dirty uh, Sexy Boys, JTG and Dirty Dangle taking on Hawksery now. Keep in mind last time there was like a somewhat of an eliminator match. That dirty sexy boys were involved. They failed thanks to the interference of Damian 666. But I think the biggest upset here was PJ Hawks was the one who picked up a huge victory when he pinned Dirty Dango. And I thought it was great. And of course, the sexy boys showed respect to both Luke and PJ. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. If the KC will cha challenge for those tag titles at hard times, that's going to be killer. Now, our next interview, we have Rolando Freedom, uh, Freeman. As you know, he's uh, has a lot of goals in mind. He wants a shot of the of the WW of I mean, the NWA World Champion uh, World Heavyweight Championship. So that's still in, and there's a lot of things that he wants to further go on with it. Now, during this news break by NWA, the system was hacked by Father James Mitchell. It appears that now that the mis the faithful the f Miserable Faithful are now targeting Natalia Markova. They say they did some research on her, that they know something about her childhood. So, don't know what it is, but trust me, it may not be good for what is coming. So, there's going to be a match at hard times. They're calling this the Voodoo Queen Coffin Match. I don't know what it is, but I don't know if Natalia Markova will be ready for this so we will probably hear from her possibly on either nwa usa or and next week's power so we'll see where it goes from there now our next we were supposed to have like some sort of an exhibition match question mark or as we know him rod uh rodney mack faces against the question mark two the original question marks brother however we kind of suspected that this was a trap by aaron stevens who claims that he owns the right to the name but out of nowhere gags the gimp came out to save question mark too it made no absolute sense why but we should say he was grateful but he was viciously attacked from behind by none other than sal the pal and father james mitchell we don't know what is the situation going on so there's a lot of confusion in the storyline but it hopefully it will make sense and clear in due time now, we do get our, our next interview with Chelsea, uh, Kylan King. Now, as you know, Kylan King will be facing in a three-way match against Camille and Chelsea Green. Now, originally it was supposed to be her and, and Camille, but 
Chelsea Green integrated herself into this match using politics to get in her way. This is something that Matt Cardona wanted, but it did not uh, sit well. So we'll just see what happens at hard times when we get there. Now, our next um, match is a Team War match. We have the Cardona's VSK, uh, Brian Myers, and Mike Knox taking on, well, Cardona is there too. Matt Cardona was right there. We have the Spectaculars, Brady Pierce. Russ Freeman and Rolando. Now, they got rid of Freeman and Pierce out instantly. But for some odd miracle, they put the situation where Rolando was able to get rid of both Myers and, of course, um, VSK. I thought that was insane. It showed, like, the underdog, the ultimate underdog can prevail. However, with a guy like Mike Knox, you probably would have thought it would not fall in his favor. But Matt Cardona, once again... Decides to get involved, allowing Chelsea Green to the famous her, but it did not work completely. It did not if waver, but it was, of course, Rolando that threw over the rope um, Mike Knox, and, of course, Rolando won the match. So that means that he's unbeatable. This right now should be driving Cardona crazy because he thinks that what happened the last time was a fluke. But this time, let's see what happens now because he is 3-for-3. Three three. Now, our main event is a number one contendership for the world television title in a three-way. We have Mims, Gustavo, and Judas. Now, we know that Mims and Judas had challenged this title before, but now it's, like, pretty interesting. But Gustavo, who's being a bit of a show-off, doesn't seem like he's knowing what he's getting himself into, knowing that he has to stay at task, but keeps falling into the same pattern. But this time, from what I can see, Mims was the one who picked up the win by pinning uh, Gustavo and naming himself as the number one contender. Now, if you guys recall last week, we were supposed to have the finals of the NWA World Television title. But that match will take place in hard times. So it's going to be AJ Kazana versus Jordan Clearwater. So we'll see what happens then. And whoever wins that match will be facing Mims as the challenger. So we'll see what happens when we get there. And that's pretty much it. So let's move on with AEW Dark. Okay, AEW Dark opened up with Dan Housen taking on John Cruz. Uh, of course, he cursed him as he normally would, but John Cruz thought he had everything under control until Dan Housen pinned him. One, two, three still goes on now our next match we have an interesting trios action we got uh, the tag team waves and curls teaming up against with um, Fuego Del Cell to take on the embassy the gates of agony um, Con Bishop Khan Tao Leona and Brian Cage um, along with that weasel Prince Nana now you probably can guess that this match Fell in favor of the embassy thanks to Brian Cage when he applied the Liger Bomb on one of the guys from um, Waves and Curls. That ended right there. We have a so-called open challenge by Nyla Rose as the current, as she said, she is the self-proclaimed uh, the TBS champion. However, the person who challenged was, what's her name? Layla Bates. But... You can guess that this match ended in her favor. And once again, they continue to mock Jade Cargo. Now, Jade Cargo is not in a happy mood with this whole thing. But she has no other choice but to get the belt back. Which is something that we know that she has to do. Next up, we got Dante Martin taking on Encore. I thought this match was pretty good. You know, uh, a lot of spots in this particular one. But... Uh, I would have assumed this ended in with the nose dive like he always does, but no, he used like a half and half Nelson or something that allowed him to pick up the match. Something that Taz said, but I think I get the reference. Next up, we have the AEW Interim Women's Championship Eliminator. We have Diamante versus Tony Storm. Now, if Diamante wins this match, she gets a title shot. But however, that did not. Well, it ended with, of course, the Texas Cloverleaf by Tony Storm to allow her to win the match and make sure her title will be safe for another day. Next up, we got the Trustbusters, Ari Davari and Sunny Kiss with Anna Nare 
Trustbusters to take on the best friend and Orange Cassidy. Now, Tony Deppin ended up on the wrong side of the Triple T powerbomb that allowed for Orange Cat to Trent Beretta to pick up the win and saved the uh, best friend. So that means Trustbusters might lose some money on this one. Next up, we got Kip Sabian taking on Dean Alexander. As you know, uh, Kip, he seems like he's doing great now since he come back, but he applied the Brain Buster onto Dean Alexander and won in that matter. Next up, we got Marina Shafir taking on uh, what's her name? Kennedy Copeland, but this match ended in a submission real quick. So now I would have presumed that now that Jade Cargo was going to show up, but no, uh, it did not. Now our main event, we have two of the most amazing half flyers, Ray Phoenix versus R.A. Fox. I thought this match was good. A lot of good spots in this one. You know, it would have been an upset by J.R. Fox, but no. Ray Phoenix applied a um, the Black Fire Drive that allowed him to win the match. So I thought it was pretty good. So there were some several good matches here, but I enjoyed them all. So I think that's pretty much it with AEW Dark. So let's move on with NXT. Okay, NXT. As you know, Braun Breaker comes back after two weeks since he def successfully defended the NXT Championship. But he even mentioned praises w w Wesley from winning his match to become the brand new North American Champion. However, Pretty Deadly comes out saying they're sick and tired of someone like Braun Breaker taking the spotlight saying, Big deal, you will retain the title. I mean, they act like they think they know everything. Wesley comes out to his defense. And, of course, they decided to mess around with the Pretty Deadly. And Wesley came up with the perfect uh, um, chance. As you know, Wesley was a former tag team champion. But Braun Breaker has never won it. So that match became our main event. And then our next, our opening match, we have R-Truth versus Grayson Waller. Now this match ended by ref's decision. There was a moment where um, Pope took a risk to jump over the top of the rope, landed real hard with his left knee onto the uh, uh, padded floor, and that called it. Grayson Waller continues to say that he is the greatest, that he is all of that, and he was not going to allow someone to come into his backyard claiming that this is his house. Now, we get a very interesting interview from the schism. As you know, they gained a new Mava, a new member, Ava Rain. They talk about her and all this stuff, like why. Um, you know, Ava said that no, ever since she got injured, no one called her asking her how she's doing except for one person. And that was Joe Gacy. So basically, they're saying that, that she had to learn the acceptance that the world will turn against her, and that's how it is. But right now, they... Bit, but uh, right now they got their bigger problem was of course Cameron Grimes is accusing um, Schism in brainwashing Ava to join their side but Ava assured them that no one did that so next week this is going to be the final time that Gazy and Grimes will confront each other now we see a little moment with that, that Pensnick prick Javier Bernal giving so much crap to Malik Blade and Inofa Idris for losing the match last week. However, he said that he has a bigger match coming up. But what he didn't realize, the, his opponent turned out to be Odison Jones. And, of course, Malik Blade and Inofa took a lot of fun with it, knowing that, well, good luck. So, he's going to be facing him. Now, regards of last week, Zoe Starks has been in a pissed-off mood not realize, realizing that things did not go exactly her way. But Indy Hartwell decided to take advantage of her, put herself in a match against her later on in the night. Now, as you know, the hell is a little worried because uh, I did mention in a news update about Bodie that they build up the story that, Co that Bodie lost his scholarship. And the hell, uh, Duke Hudson became the flag bearer for the night. But, however, Duke Hudson got himself into so much trouble, decided to interfere in the match. But, uh, Keanu James was able to pick up the victory. 
and then of course, um, for some, uh, Charlie Dempsey shows up and attacks Chase. New cousin shows up uh, back to to save the fight, but we don't know what's gonna happen then. Now, we're, then we see an interview with uh, Fallon Henley, Brooks Jensen, and Josh Briggs talking about something. However, one of Kiana James' assistants showed up with an envelope. We don't know what was that all about. So they decide. So it's still unclear, but we will find out hopefully soon. Now we uh, we do see Wesley and Braun Breaker interacting with each other. Mister Stone is like decide to show up and say that what Von Wagner is now becoming the next guy who will most likely be challenging Braun Breaker for the title, claiming that Von Wagner is the guy who will dethrone him. But of course, Braun Breaker has no interest in that because he he if, thing is he's calling Von Wagner. If he wanted a title shot, he would have done it himself. So he kind of put that in that way. Now our next match, our return match from Od Odyssey Jones. We haven't seen him for quite some time, but he made a real big number on Javier Bernal by doing a spinning um, body slam and boom, that was a weight. A great comeback. Now, our next interview with Apollo Cruz this time, as you know, he still has his eyes set on the NXT title. But however, Von Wagner tells him that he's going to be the one to obtain the title. So we'll see about that. Then we did get a little video package from this guy named Scripps. Now, we don't know who he is. I just thought it was nuts. So it's kind of interesting of this new character. I never heard of him, but we'll see where it goes. Then we jump in with Indy Hartwell versus Zoe Stark. Now Zoe Stark is still on hinge after what happened last week. She lost it. She almost tried to hurt Indy Hartwell by powerbombing her through the commentary table. But Zoe, but Nikita Lyons tries to reason with her. But because of that, it cost her the match. Thing when Indy Hartwell applied, um, what was it? Uh, really tried to, uh, you know. When she pinned her, but basically this was a very disappointing loss. So we know that Zoe Starks is unhinged over what happened last week. Now, recently we have seen Valentina Frost recently about what happened last time. Sangha left her all alone when Ver shows up. We don't know what it is, but Ver is telling Sangha that do people appreciate him? That's the thing. So once again, Valentina Faraz walked into a match all by herself take on Cora Jade, but Cora Jade really made a good number on her by applying the DDT, and of course, she was trying to hurt Valentina Farah, saying that she doesn't deserve to be there, but luckily, Wendy Chu showed up and tried to deal with her. As you know, Wendy Chu does have her issues towards uh, Jade, uh, Cora Jade, so we'll find out what happens next. Now, Tony D'Angelo and Stax are apparently discussing business. As always, we just saw Valentina I mean, uh, Erica and the Electra Lopez shows up telling Tony D'Angelo saying that she's now alone as a dangerous woman. Now, Stax asks Tony D'Angelo, do you really think she's that dangerous as a alone? So Tony realized, yeah. So he's not too surprised. Now, our main event is the NXT tag team title. Pretty deadly uh, versus Wesley and uh, Braun Breaker. Now, once again, the tactics with Pretty Deadly really uh, continues to build up more, allowing them to retain the titles. But however, at the end, we saw Von Wagner finally make his claim that he wants to challenge for the NXT title. But Paula Cruz is disbelieved that he can't believe that Von Wagner was the one who beat him. For But J.D. McDonough tells Paula Cruz, well, good luck. Seems someone beat you to it first. So we'll see what happens in the upcoming weeks regarding of this title. So I think that's pretty much it what we have with NXT. I believe it's time to call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. We do got Wednesday, as you know, AEW Dynamite. I'm so excited to see this. Uh, don't know yet what I'm going to review. There's a lot of wrestling I haven't seen, like the latest GCW event, and I'm high. There's others that I haven't that I really want to get into, and we'll get from there. As you know, we are in the month of November now. Uh, we'll see what happens then. Um, 
I think that's it. So I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.